Late on July 20th, distressing videos started appearing on Chinese social media. We are hearing the desperate calls for help from people in Zhengzhou, a mega city in central China, experiencing torrential rainfall. The people are commuters trapped in a flooded subway train. More than 500 people on board. For over three hours, the passengers were stuck inside the carriage as they rapidly filled with water and ran out of air. Fourteen passengers were later confirmed dead by the authorities. Their train home had turned into death trap. It wasn't the first subway flood to make global headlines this summer, but it was the most devastating one. What exactly happened that night? We analyzed the timeline of events on July 20th to understand how the tragedy unfolded. The train was running on Line 5 of Zhengzhou's subway system. There are seven lines overall in the city, which has an urban population of over 6 million people. The subway network is new. Line 5 has been operational for just over two years. It's also one of the busiest lines, running in a loop around the city center. All 32 stations are underground. The disaster took place on day three of an unprecedented downpour. In 72 hours, the city received over 622 millimeters of rain nearly an entire year's worth of rainfall. Some low-lying parts of the city had been inundated, the water anchor deep. But most local residents were not overly concerned. Flash floods have been a recurring issue in Zhengzhou. The city's weather bureau had tried to raise the alarm. On July 17th, it first announced that heavy rainfall was coming. On the same day, several local tourist attractions announced they were closing down temporarily. Over the next two days, the Bureau would send out another 13 alerts, including five top-level storm red alerts. But all the warnings failed to catch the city's attention. On July 20th, People across Zhengzhou put on raincoats and went to work as usual. The city's flood defenses, however, had already been pushed to the edge of collapse. At around 4 p.m., the rain suddenly picked up with a record-breaking 201.9 millimeters of water falling in just one hour. It quickly became a deluge, turning streets into rivers Flood water began pouring into underground parking lots and tunnels. The subway system continued providing a full service until 3.40 p.m., when the operator Zhengzhou Metro Group started to announce closures to some station entrances. Most trains, including those on Line 5, kept running for another two and a half hours. Those two and a half hours were crucial. Let's first zoom in and take a look at Wulongkou Station. It's the rail yard for Line 5, where all trains enter and exit the main tracks from. The yard sits on a low-lying terrain than the surrounding areas. As the floods engulf the city, large amounts of water began to flow into Wulongkou rail yard. Around 4.13 p.m., a construction worker, Mr. Li, reported seeing water building up by the wall surrounding the rail yard. However, this shouldn't have happened. According to Chinese government regulations issued in 2013, subway rail yards should be built in areas with good natural drainage. To the yard's east, there used to be a sewage canal running northwest into the Jalu River which provided some extra drainage capacity. But half of the canal had been filled in during a road construction project. 
with the other half capped to help drain off rainwater. A few months ago, the canal had also been covered with cement boards as part of a citywide beautification project. The blockage left the flood water with nowhere to go. Now, the only thing separating the water from the Line 5 subway tunnel was a thin, meter-high retaining wall. Back in the city, commuters were leaving work early because of the rain. Unable to drive on the flooded roads, many chose to take the subway, believing it to be their best and possible only way to get home. But the water had already started seeping into the stations. Ah. These videos are taken by passengers at different subway stations around Zhengzhou. At 4.30 p.m., Zhengzhou Metro announced it would shut down sections of Line 1 and Line 2. Ten minutes later, Line 5 closed a few station entrances to prevent flood water from reaching the platform. But the safety measures didn't work. Around 4.50 p.m., a train carrying hundreds of commuters left Qinghai Center Square Station. By this point, water was pouring into the rail yard like a waterfall. A worker at Wulongko captured the scene in a video with the timestamp of 5.02. In the footage, we can see that part of the retaining wall has disappeared. Now the torrent of flood water could go in two directions. Yueji Park Station or Shakolu Station. But Yueji Park Station is situated around 30 meters higher than Shakolu. Most of the flood water flowed downward to the lower side. In an official statement published by the subway operator on July 22nd, it claimed that the wall was confirmed collapsed at around 6 p.m. Meanwhile, the Line 5 train was heading toward the flood water. At 5.21 p.m., the train was briefly stopped by the emergency brake system as it passed Zhengzhou People's Hospital Station. It's unclear what triggered it. Several minutes later, the train restarted and continued for another stop. At around 5.40 p.m., the train arrived at Haitansi Station and stayed there for a few minutes. Water began seeping into the tunnel. Instead of asking passengers to get off, the Line 5 train left the station, and the next stop is Shakolu. The distance between the two stations is less than a kilometer. It's usually only a two-minute ride. But the train stopped it before reaching Shakolu station. The tunnel head had been severely flooded. For many commuters, it was so close to home. But this was where events took a dark turn. According to survivors, the driver tried to restart the train and drive back to Haitansi, but it only moved 100 meters backward. Then the emergency brake system stopped the train yet again. And now the Line 5 train with over 500 passengers on board was trapped inside the tunnel. The subway train was stopped on a sloping stretch of track, 200 meters from Shakolu station. It was the worst place it could have stopped. The slope was designed to allow trains to conserve energy while entering and exiting stations. At its steepest point, it had a 1.4 degree incline. During the flood, however, the slope sent water rushing down the tunnel. The train is 140 meters long and has six cars. The last carriage was at the lower end of the slope. The water level here was much higher, and the casualties would be higher too. By 6.05, the water in the sixth carriage had reached people's ankles. One of the passengers on board was Zhou Dequiang, 
a Shanghai resident who was in Zhengzhou on business. He sent his wife a two-second video of what was happening, but it was the last message Zhou ever sent. As the water level quickly rose, the train driver ran through the train, telling passengers to evacuate to the first car. Soon after, the power supply cut off. At around 6:30 p.m., the driver and a group of passengers managed to open a door in the first carriage. They got out of the train and climbed onto the emergency walkway in the tunnel. But walkway was only half a meter wide, barely enough for one person to go along. Mr. Zhou, the passenger from Shanghai, made it out of the train, but slipped and fell. He was carried away by the flood water. His body was found deep in the tunnel six days later. The first group of passengers made it to Shakolu Station at around 7:20 p.m. They got lucky. Most of the people waiting behind couldn't follow them. As the remaining passengers lined up to escape, the water level rose and the train was dislodged from the track. The passengers were forced back into the train. Many tried to call the police and fire service for help, using up the last bars on their phones' batteries. Ding Xiaopei, a local radio journalist, was on board the second carriage. She had been sending updates from inside the train to her colleagues through a messaging app. By 7:30 p.m., the water had reached her chest, and she started to have difficulty breathing. Parents lifted their children out of the water, while others stood on the seats. As the carriage started to run out of oxygen, the passengers decided it's worth the risk to break the window just under the car's roof. <laughs> This decision bought them time. According to Ding Xiaopei, the city's fire and rescue brigade arrived at 8:30. Officials estimate that the rescue operation took five hours. As Ding Xiaopei exited the subway, she was welcomed by doctors and volunteers. The deluge caused 292 deaths in Zhengzhou. 47 people remain missing. Floods occur in China almost every summer. However, the flash flooding hits Zhengzhou this time showed how quickly torrential downpours can turn deadly in a populated modern city. China's Minister of Transportation has ordered metro system nationwide to review and improve contingency plans for extreme weather events. However, there are still questions that need to be answered. If climate change makes extreme weather more common in the future. Are governments around the world prepared for it?